So welcome to the webinar today. Uh, my name is Simon York and I'm a senior technical advisor at City and Gales and I'm joined today by my colleague Anita Crossland who is a senior post-16 manager at City and Gales. This is probably the fourth or fifth webinar we've done around curriculum reforms uh, and I would say some of the themes that we're going to present and talk through in this webinar have been coming up fairly regularly on the previous webinar so it's just something we wanted to talk through with customers around how you plan a curriculum over the next few years which you know we're in a we're in a space where there's been an awful lot of change and a lot awful lot of turmoil and the intention is to help you navigate through that so uh, without further ado let's begin so this is what we're going to cover today so Anita is going to take us through a recap of the reform so far. Uh, a lot of you will be familiar with this now, and I will say with the information that we're presenting today, you know, some of it you will know, some of it you won't. Uh, you know, there is some new information in there as well, but it's for everyone, you know, so it's an overview of from the beginning to the end of the reforms. We'll talk a bit about the T levels and the defunding list and the product extensions. Now, it's not strictly speaking part of the reforms product extension to city Hill's own product decisions but what we've found as we've been going through the previous webinars is there's always a lot of questions around defunding t levels product extension so on and so forth so we've tried to factor in everything that may have a bearing on how you plan curriculum over the next few years we'll have a look at some of the cycle one uh, submitted qualifications so mainly around level three and some ideas around what we're doing at level two and we'll look at some of the support mechanisms that you can use with City and Girls to be able to plan an effective curriculum over the next few years. Uh, as I mentioned before, some further key information on Cycle 1 products and uh, just I suppose a reiteration of what the landscape is, the future landscape uh, for both the sectors and for the wider reforms space in which we operate. And then just wrapping up, we will have an overview of who you can speak to for further information and who you can speak to really to talk through some of the things that we've presented today. So it's quite quite packed. You know, there's quite a lot to get through today, uh, but we're hoping we'll still have some time for questions. Uh, don't worry about when you type the questions in, by the way, just start typing straight away if you've got some. And maybe we'll answer some of those in the background as well. And then we'll use some of those to talk through towards the end uh, of the presentation. So I'm going to hand over now. So Anita, Anita, I'll continue to drive the slides. So just tell me when you'd like to advance. Uh, but this is over to you. Thank you, Simon, and good morning, everybody. Um, so as uh, Simon said, my first section of the slide deck is to sort of just talk you through a, a quick recap on the reforms and where we are to date. So if we can move on. So a reminder of the uh, Skills and Post-16 Education Act of 2022, the uh, initial idea was to simplify the system that would support progression to positive outcomes for all learners. The, at the heart of this new Education Act was putting employers and standards at the heart of the design of technical qualifications. So that was the key theme that was coming through originally from the introduction of T-levels, through to, um, as I said, the reforms themselves at level three and level two. The purpose, obviously, is to ensure, as we've said, that those learners reach those positive outcomes. And the timescales of this um, is from 2025. So the first teaching of these new reformed qualifications is from September 2025. However, T-levels obviously have been introduced over the last uh, few years, starting in 2020. So T-levels are part of the Skills and Post-16 Act. Um, so it's important to start looking at them uh, as a whole um, as we move through this slide deck. So the idea now looking at level three is to remove funding for 16 to 19 year olds uh, at level three where there are quali current qualifications that overlap with T levels. And this summer we will see the defunding of the first list of qualifications that overlap with T levels. And we'll come on to a little bit more detail on that uh, later. The idea is so that from 2025, when these new qualifications, these new reformed qualifications go live, the removal of funding for existing qualifications will start. So we will start to see 
current provision disappearing as we know it. The creation of T-levels will be the primary offer in technical education for 16 to 18 classroom-based learning. So where there is a T-level, that will be the qualification uh, or the programme that a young person will undertake within a classroom setting. The reforms also uh, move into level two at the same time as level three. So alongside our level three reformed qualifications that will be approved from 2025, we will also see level two qualifications starting to be introduced. The intention is that alongside GCSE and functional skills, there will be three categories of qualifications that will be funded in, for a classroom-based learning. The first category are qualifications that support progression to technical study at level three. So these uh, qualifications will prime, their primary purpose is to enable that learner to move from level two to level three in a classroom-based environment. So it may be a pre-qualification to T-level or another uh, reformed level three qualification. There is then a group of uh, qualifications or a category of qualifications that will support progression to academic study at level three. And as part of the reforms, we will see um, qualifications being introduced that can be taken alongside A-levels. And uh, the level two offer is to enable that young person again to progress through that academic route. And then finally, the last bucket of qualifications that will support uh, young people is the primary um, purpose is to move straight into employment at level two, where there is a job role or an occupation uh, where level two is deemed as an entry competence qualification. So a lot of sectors have um, some really clear job roles at level two. So the idea is these qualifications at level two will enable that learner to move straight into employment or onto an apprenticeship at level two. Other technical qualifications will also be funded at level two, such as cross-cutting and specialist qualifications, as will ESOL and skills for life. The reforms do go further than level two, and we will see um, as we move on to the timeline, there are other levels of qualifications that will be introduced over the next five years. And if I move on to the next slide, Simon. Just as a, uh, a reminder of the categories of qualifications that will be funded from 2025. So there's a whole bunch of qualifications at level two, which I'm going to take you through in the moment, and also at level three. So we're focusing on those levels in this webinar, but obviously um, as, as timelines move forward, we will be giving you information around other levels. So looking at level two first, so the intention is that to be a level two T-level foundation category of qualifications. And this category is for people that, young people that are perhaps not quite ready for a T-level and need an extra year funded provision to enable them progress. These qualifications will be mapped to the National Technical Outcomes, or NTOs as they are called, already published on the Department for Education website. And these um, categories of qualifications will be small in size. So around 120 guided learning hours and will support the transition to T-levels. So the category of qualifications that currently exist in this um, arena are the transition programme qualifications. So these T-level foundation qualifications will replace that transition programme. And alongside the T-level foundation qualification, that learner will also embark on meaningful um, in, uh, employer engagement through some work experience, potentially need to retake their maths and English. So that programme becomes a fully funded full-time programme. 
The next category of qualification at level two is the progression to alternative level three qualifications. So these are, are perhaps enabling a young person to move on to an apprenticeship at level three and maybe uh, needs further learning at level two. Again, small in size, around 240 guided learning hours, but enables that progression onto level three qualifications. The guided learning hours, by the way, are set by the Department for Education rather than uh, the awarding organisations. So these are the guidelines that we have been given. So they cannot be any bigger than 240, for example. The next category of qualifications that I mentioned in the previous slide are those progression to employment. So they are occupational entry qualifications or OTQs, which provide skills, knowledge and behaviours which will be mapped to an existing standard and can lead to progression into employment where an occupation exists. So, for example, bricklaying may be one hairdressing maybe another so where we've got real job outcomes at level two at the end of a level two program the progression to employment will uh, enable that young person to move on then there's a category of qualifications around employer proposed. So these would be designed with an employer or with a group of employers where no existing standard exists, but there has been identified opportunities to progress into an occupation or job role. So awarding organisations can develop qualifications in uh, conjunction with employers and would be able to submit these um, through the new channels. The next category of qualifications are the level two cross cutting so qualifications which cross sectors so they are not in sort of in uh, hospitality and catering or in engineering but qualifications such as health and safety which cut across these qualifications will be developed by awarding organizations and put forward for funding approval and the last bucket of qualifications at level two are level two technical specialist qualifications these are expected to be to build on an existing standard to enable further competency in a specialist or a unique subject or subsector of um, a technical qualification. It will include extra knowledge, skills and behaviours, uh, particularly for adults, they are expected to be small in size. Then we move on to our level three OTQs or occupational uh, entry qualifications, and these are ideal, ideally for 16 to 19 year olds, which provide knowledge, skills and behaviours which are mapped to a level three standards and they provide that sort of entry into skills employment where a T level does not exist and that's really important so primarily if there's a T level that's where that young person would uh, move into these are specifically for areas where there are no T levels uh, where a qualification can be developed and can be funded but again they're expecting these to be quite um, low in numbers because obviously the T levels are expanding across all uh, sectors. The next uh, qualification category at level three are specifically for adults and these are technical qualifications which again provide knowledge, skills and behaviours mapped to an existing standard and they provide that progression into skilled employment. Now the difference here for an adult, they can be in areas where a T level exists, so we can develop adult qualifications in um, construction, in uh, building service engineering, in uh, engineering etc where a T level exists but they are for adults only. The next category of qualifications is the level three technical specialist qualifications so like level two they build on a standard and competency um, and include those extra knowledge skills and behaviours specifically for adults and are expected to be small in size. The next category is the level three cross cutting and again these qualifications will cross sectors so one of the areas particularly at level three is management so where we see many management roles across a variety of sector areas a uh, 
series of management qualifications could be developed here, which would be deemed to be cross-cutting and obviously uh, would cross all of those sectors. And then finally, as in level two, there is an employer proposed category, which would be designed with employers when no standards exist, but there is an opportunity uh, to enable progression into an occupation or a specific job role. So that's just a recap of the categories. Obviously, we will be sharing these slides um, and we have lots more information on our website um, if you want to sort of drill down into the details of those individual categories. So these categories of what awarding organisations have been set, obviously, as part of the criteria and reforms. And obviously, um, we will need to develop qualifications to fit the criteria that is set within each of these categories. And we will then have to submit them, um, as we have in cycle one, uh, for approval by DFE, IFA, Ofqual, and obviously to ensure that we get funding uh, for these qualifications in the future. So next slide, Simon. So just a reminder of when the cycles and sectors will be rolled out. So the reformed qualifications, as I said earlier, will be launched for first teaching from September 2025 in a small group of sector qualifications. So it's not all sectors, it's not all levels, um, so it will be rolled out in stages. What we will start to see, as I said, from this summer is the T-level, the first list of T-level overlap qualifications. The defunding will begin from uh, this summer. So in 2025, so September 2025, cycle one qualifications will be rolled out for first T teaching in sectors such as construction, building service, engineering, digital, education and childcare, engineering and manufacturing and health and science. And that will be for levels three and level two. In 2026, we will see cycle two qualifications being rolled out again at both levels, levels two and three, and in sectors such as land, business, catering and hospitality, care, creative, hair and beauty, legal finance and accounting, transport and logistics, protective services, sales, marketing and procurement. Then in 2027, which is deemed as cycle three, that this is when we will see the level one and entry qualifications starting to be taught. So the new reformed level one entry and um, PSE qualifications. And then the final cycle, which is in 2028, which is cycle four, we will start to see English, maths, ESOL and skills for life being rolled out. Just as a reminder, English and math does not include GCSE or functional skills at this time. So they are the four cycles of qualifications and in the sectors. Now, awarding organisations will be able to develop qualifications in different cycles, um, but there is a um, memorandum at the moment that if we haven't uh, submitted qualifications in cycle one or two, then there will be be a pause until 2028 for qualifications, um, more qualifications to come on board in those sectors at level three and level two. So that's a really important point there. Uh, there will be a pause uh, in 2027. So um, that's the timeline as we know it at the moment. So moving forward. And we're now going to start to look at a little bit more information around T-levels. As I said at the beginning of the webinar, T-levels are um, still very much on uh, the government's agenda. Uh, and certainly as we move forward for the next 10 years, uh, T-levels have been sort of identified as a cross-party um, uh, project that uh, all um, parties have joined up to. Now, obviously, the T-levels are a procurement process, so each awarding organisation uh, would need to uh, register their intent and bid for a T-level. Uh, we've been quite successful in our T-level bids, and we currently are the contract holders for building service engineering, on-site construction, three engineering and manufacturing T-levels, uh, management administration, the agriculture, land management, 
management and production and animal care and management. So these will be our sort of T levels uh, for the foreseeable future and they will be uh, become the funded qualification, the only funded qualification for 16 to 18 year olds in a classroom setting in the technical space. Um, obviously T levels um, policy is that they uh, enable that progression to a job or HE. They contain a substantial industry placement. They have a core component which uh, sort of has an employer set project. Maths and English, if that learner has not completed maths and English to a grade four, will need to consider and continue to uh, study maths and English, although the achievement of that maths and English isn't a requirement for the certification. It also includes occupational specialisms, so those learners can decide which occupation that they want to sort of move into. And it also uh, includes transferable and core skills. Moving on to the next slide, Simon. Other T levels. Obviously, there are other T levels that City and Guilds um, have either decided not to bid for or uh, were unsuccessful. Are uh, in digital education and childcare, health and science, creative and design, legal, finance and accounting, sales, marketing and procurement, catering and hospitality still to be launched, and beauty T level still to be launched. These contracts are already held by other awarding organisations. So obviously any awarding organisation that offers the T levels that city and guilds have um, obviously hold the contracts are or where we have uh, qualifications where other AOs have hold the contracts those existing qualifications will not be funded in the future so you can see how the landscape is changing considerably and as a reminder that all those T levels will be the funded route for level three for full time learners aged 16 to 18 in England. So obviously T levels plays a very, very big part of the new skills landscape. Moving forward. So T level overlap list, as I said um, earlier, uh, the publication of the first T level overlap list happened 18 months ago um, where um, the DfE published a list of qualifications that they had deemed contained content which overlapped to T-level content across wave one and two. So uh, a piece of work was done by the Department for Education where they had looked at qualifications across all awarding organisations in sectors that cross uh, the T-levels wave one and two. So that is uh, in sectors such as BSE construction, education and childcare, digital and health and science, including dentistry. There was 134 qualifications across multiple awarding organisations that have been um, identified as being defunded from this summer. 35 of those 134 qualifications were City and Guilds qualifications and are impacted. So those qualifications have been published on the Department for Education website and we've also published those list of qualifications on our website. The next phase for our waves three and four will happen next July, July 2025, and those funding lists, defunding lists, are already on our website and on the government website. So again, for the other sectors. So it's really important that you um, have a look at those lists if you haven't already, so you can sort of see what perhaps you're currently offering in your curriculum, which won't be funded in the future. And then obviously we need to sort of look at what your options are. OK, Simon, I think I'm now going to hand over to you. It's neat. So I need to mention some of the external factors that are impacting on, you know, how you plan a curriculum. We've also got, I mean, there is a bit of externality to this, but product extensions. And it's something that's come up a number of times in previous webinars that people have had quite a few questions around what sitting guilds is going to have available. So, uh, Quite recently, you know, so only a few months ago, we sent out an update around mainly around the December 2023 product extensions and every customer uh, that we have on our mail list received an email, which you can see on the left hand side of the screen there. And it was about changes, whether qualifications have been extended or whether they had been retired. Uh, 
this is very much around obviously city and guilds is product extensions just a point to know because we've had quite a few questions previously because city and guilds extend something doesn't necessarily mean it's 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 definitively got funding so it's important you return to the funding web pages and we'll have a look at those and each will take you through that a little bit later on but generally we either extend or retire qualifications based on usage and currency and things like that now we know no matter how good our systems are that uh maybe not everybody picked up that email but like i say it's gone to every single center and that's it on the left hand side but if you do go on our qualification pages so across the uh across the top of our any of our web pages you'll see a qualifications tab and if you click on that one and look down the right hand side do you see the little box there that says qualification decisions find out more if you click on that find out more box uh, when you find it like i said on the qualifications page what it will do it will take you back to the original focus alert email that we sent out and through that you'll be able to find our decision so they're actually in the form of spreadsheets showing your qualification decisions and i would say it's an incredibly important area. If I'm a curriculum manager, uh, somebody who makes curriculum decisions uh, at a centre, you want to be able to take in all the information to make curriculum decisions. It is, you know, the defunding list, it's the funding pages, and it's the product extensions for retirement. So absolutely key elements to be able to plan an effective curriculum over the next few years. So cycle one, uh, once again, another important area to make you uh, aware of and make sure that you can plan and make curriculum decisions. I need to mention before that submission has been for level three cycle one, and these are the qualifications that we've submitted for approval for level three cycle one. Now it doesn't look like an awful lot of qualifications, but as I need to mention before, this is an area where there'll be significant overlap with T level. So we wouldn't be able to submit a level three cycle one qualification for the 16 to 18 uh, user group that overlapped with T levels. You know, that that wouldn't be a possibility for us. You know, that would not make it through submission. So you can see that we've got things like plumbing and electrical installations, but generally for, for funding in England, those qualifications uh, will only be available for adults because the T level will be the go to qualification in those those spaces. It mentions there at the top, and we will reiterate that when we get to the funding slides, the funding catalogue will be updated May 2024, and the final funding catalogue will be produced in July 2024, and expect to see the, these qualifications on there. Running alongside that, we'll be building our qualification pages and uploading our specifications and our sample assessment materials for these qualifications. So expect to see them probably from around May, March going into May onwards, but no later than May, you'll be able to actually see the scheme handbooks. Uh, as I need to mention before as well, first delivery is 2025. So you're really gonna have you know, 15 to 18 months of lead time to prepare for first delivery of these qualifications, which is very positive for scientists to make sure they've got everything in place to be able to uh, deliver. So further information will be coming out very soon on our websites and our web pages on level two cycle one. I expect to see a few more qualifications in that space because obviously you haven't got that overlap with T levels. And these qualifications, once again, will only cover cycle one because of the phasing that Anita showed you earlier. So there'll be qualifications in the construction and building services engineering sector. There'll be qualifications in the transport slash automotive space and some engineering qualifications as well. And then obviously this process will be repeated in cycle two, where we'll start to see level three and level two qualifications announced around those sectors that sit in cycle two. So where can you get more information? Well, one of the main sources of information is our reforms webpage where we keep everything together. I mentioned the qualifications tab and you can see some of the tabs across the top of the screen in that screenshot there. Qualifications and then qualifications reform England. And remember these reforms are about England and specifically to the funded side of the provision. You know, apprenticeships isn't, isn't covered by these reforms. So click on there and you'll be able to get an overview uh, and some links through to some really useful tools which we'll have a look at in a moment but it's a really important uh, uh, source of information on there you will see links through to the qualification pages themselves we're just 
building those now ready for the qualification page launch so click on there there's another tab a little bit further along qualification delivery which you can see on the right hand side of the tabs across the top that's another really important one and that's where you'll be able to click through to information on funding which we'll have a look at in a later slide but that's certainly one really key source of information if there are any uh, faqs or themes that come up off the back of this webinar and early ones uh, you'll be able to click through from that page as well onto our faqs page as well uh, so one of the first real tools that you would probably want to start off with this year so i'm just going to take a sip of water I've got a bit of a cough today. So the curriculum planning guide uh, is launch is imminent on this, and this is very much around the here and now. So planning for delivery in 2024, going into 2025. Um, so you'll see that appear on our web page very, very soon. Our business managers will have a copy of that, and they'll that'll be incredibly useful in planning your curriculum for the next, you know, for the short term, I would say the next 12 to 18 months. It's well set up where if you click on the title, it will jump you to the relevant section so you don't have to scroll through pages and pages. So it's very much around 2024 and a look ahead to 2025. And we think is going to be a very, very useful resource for understanding what I should be doing right now. And then further to that a longer term view a sector on a page document and these are really good at sitting down like i said we want our business managers and talking through your longer term plans our business manager having a lot of talk around our local skills improvement plans particularly now and this is a really good opportunity to use this tool to sit down and contact details will be available for our business managers towards the end of the webinar but this is a really good tool in unpicking what's in city England's curriculum you know what may be defunded because it incorporates all those changes into this document the section on a page but what will re potentially replace some of those qualifications that you've previously ran so it's a great conversation piece this one and a really really useful tool our business managers find it very useful and our customers who've talked through it with business managers have found it very very useful as a tool you can download that now from the website but it is a really good uh you know tool to actually be able to sit down and have a conversation with people so have a have a look at that one as well okay need to funding information do you want to take us through that one Yes, thanks, Simon. So um, thank you. So, as Simon mentioned, obviously, our web pages are a source of uh, information. And uh, one of the most important ones uh, is obviously where you will find those links to our funding catalogue. Um, so as Simon said, uh, if you sort of look at the screen on the um, right hand side, you will be able to sort of see the qualification delivery and then your funding uh, sort of um, sub link that you can sort of click onto and you can sort of start to sort of look through the funding catalogues. Um, obviously, the first draft, as we ex uh, explained earlier, the first funding list is expected uh, in May 2024. We are expecting, obviously, subject to approval by DfE, Ofqual and IFATE, our reformed uh, level three cycle one qualifications to appear on that draft funded list if they are approved, obviously, all still subject to approval. Um, and then the final list will be published published in July 2024 and this will have hopefully our level three and our level two cycle one qualifications. So as Simon said from sort of July this year you will be able to see what's funded alongside other qualifications as part of the reforms. So it's not a separate list that's going to come out just for reforms, it will be part of the wider funded uh, catalogue. Um, and then obviously those qualifications um, from a funding list, also the web pages and where you'll find all our specifications, etc., will all be there to help you sort of plan for 2025. So we again it, it's sort of you know over a year um, in advance to sort of help. And we will continue to do further funding updates and uh, further reformed information. It's important to note that uh, the Department for Education set dates within FALA. So 
we don't control the sort of funding dates or the funding catalogue. Uh, obviously, when we do get queries that come through to our customer support teams, etc., obviously we can sort of uh, forward links on, etc. But they're all found on this web page, so it is an extremely important web page, as uh, Simon explained, for funding, particularly if you are planning your curriculums. Um, you will note that obviously City and Guilds qualification dates are uh, aligned to our products and not the funded offer because obviously um, we have no control over the funding catalogues, so the external funding catalogues. So our qualification dates that appear on Wall Garden, that appear on our qualification dates, obviously refer to our internal dates, not necessarily to the funding dates. So it's really important that you, you check FALA um, when you are sort of planning curriculums. Also, funding is dictated, as we've said, by the Department of Education and only for a one year period. So it's a, it's a, an annual um, process that they undergo. And obviously, we are, are ensuring that our qualifications are available for funding. But obviously, it's ultimately the Department of Education or what was ESFA's decision. Uh, a reminder that DfE will not extend funding for the following year if three three key things the qualification has an end date before the 31st of july of that academic year if the qualification no is no longer eligible so uh, where um, the department for education have sort of obviously monitored below 100 learners or there is a change in purpose they will deem that qualification to be um, defunded. Uh, so again, they do monitor the uptake of qualifications um, and obviously they inform then the awarding organisations that those qualifications will be defunded and that's when we then come out to you. And then finally, the new criteria is if they have deemed the current qualifications part of the overlap list. So again, uh, they inform awarding organisations and then obviously we will inform you. Thank you, Simon. So that's sort of the funding up list. Now I believe it's back to you. Oh, no, maybe it's not. It's still me, sorry. Uh, so what we're that's going the, to do... Yeah. Well, ultimately, yeah. these ones are ETS. That's right, yeah, that's right. So what we wanted to do was just to look at those uh, sectors in cycle one that we mentioned earlier and, and give you a little bit more information uh, on those. Obviously, really important, must stress through the next sort of few slides that you check those defunding lists to see what is available. But we wanted to give you a snapshot on a page for each of those cycle one sectors. So for this summer, the following will be impacted for City and Guilds on-site construction and BSc portfolio of qualifications. So as a reminder, T-levels will be the only funded 16 to 18 classroom-based qualification at level three from this September. So if you are intending to offer a level three classroom based provision for 16 to 18 year olds for your on site construction or your building service engineering learners, it will only be the T levels via City and Guilds that you will be able to access. The current technical qualifications in plumbing have been identified on that overlap that list and therefore are defunded. The existing legacy and technical qualifications in constructions have also been identified, so therefore they are also being defunded for 16 to 18 year olds. However, as a reminder, the current qualifications in plumbing and electrical, the H202, will continue to be funded for your 19 plus learners until summer 2025. So if you have uh, learners that are 19 plus, obviously 19 year old, 19 plus year olds cannot access the T level. That's again um, a government derived um, uh, rule. So they will and they can access the uh, current technical qualifications in plumbing and electrical for uh, another year. And the current technical and legacy qualifications for on site construction again will continue to be funded for your 19 plus learners until 2025. So for your adult learners, obviously, you can continue to offer uh, existing qualifications. So, Simon, over to you for your next bit. 
of a theme presented today. I think we've been uh, we've tried to provide some clarity with these slides, haven't we, Anita? Because we still get asked a number of questions around what is my alternative offer for 16 to 18 classroom based qualifications in BSc post, you know, 2024. So, you know, it is quite a clear message on these, you know, but it, it obviously the the thing that will change is the is the date, you know, the date of introduction. Engineering manufacturing, very similar message to construction in BSc, but happening a year later. So T level will be the only funded classroom based provision at level three from September 2025. So one year later. Uh, once again, qualifications have been identified. Or just a point to make as well in engineering and manufacturing engineering and manufacturing automotive is included in the T level for those automotive customers who've been looking for something to deliver the automotive is in the T level so both engineering and manufacturing and automotive have been identified in the overlap list for wave three and four so obviously the defunding will happen from summer 2025 but the current legacy qualifications and technical qualifications you can continue to run for 19 plus until the main level of reforms kicks in but to be honest with you in engineering and manufacturing everything coincides anyway because the overlap list is 2025 and so is the uh the wider reforms is also 2025 uh, for september 2024 pretty much business as usual i'd say in engineering and manufacturing current provision but also including t levels available therefore no changes and we'll have a look a little bit of a slide overview of that one later on back to you anita thank you so education and child care obviously for this summer um it is impacted uh, education and childcare qualifications from city and guilds. So obviously there is a T level that does exist um, and has been sort of uh, been offered for the last sort of few years. This will be the only funded 16 to 18 classroom based qualification at level three from 2024. Obviously city and guilds uh, have not got that T level contract. So therefore we cannot have a funded offer in that 16 to 18 space classroom based. Obviously all apprenticeships are, are open and are not impacted by any of the reforms. Uh, so that's really important to note. So our current qualifications are the level three diploma in early years practitioner has been identified on the overlap lift and therefore will be defunded for 16 to 18 year olds as expected. Um, however, that same qualification uh, will continue to be funded for 19 plus until 2025. So again, please check the defunding list. We've we'll put that on every slide, haven't we? we? need to always check the list. It's the, it's the sort of truth uh, health and science we've organized these slides by the way around the occupational maps you'll see that we've got education child care and health and science on separate slides but once again this t-level overlap uh and that's happening in 2024 this time for this sector uh, so the t-level will be the only funded uh, classroom based qualification uh, a number of qualifications have been identified once again on the overlap list so qualifications in health care dental you know our product codes for four three four five four two three eight three six two five are all on those defunding lists but once again you know a lot of those qualifications we've already mentioned will continue to be funded for 19 plus until 2025 so make sure once again you use the tools we've directed you to check the defunding list and you're clear on your provision and your offer in that space and then digital anita yep similar final message one. Yeah, similar message. So from this summer, obviously, all city and guilds uh, digital qualifications will be impacted. So because obviously there is a T level, so uh, it will only be the funded 16 to 18 classroom based qualification at level three from September 2024. Obviously, uh, we do not hold the contract for digital. Uh, therefore, we will not have that funded offer at 16 to 19. However, many of our current qualifications in the digital portfolio have been identified on the overlap list so uh, as previously these will be defunded uh, but there are some current qualifications in the digital city and girls portfolio that will be continued to be funded for one further year until the summer 2025 so you can start to see as we run through those and when you you take time to look at the defunding list um, these sectors and the ones to come in cycle two will start to really shape the future of the uh, provision uh, across all awarding organisations.
conditions. Um, so uh, yeah, it's really important that you know that you are checking those funding lists and also your curriculum offer. Thank you, Simon. So now we're going to look at sort of a little bit sort of uh, more futuristic. So imagine us in 2027. Um, so uh, we're starting to sort of look and we're using this as an example, as Simon said, using engineering and automotive to sort of look at, you know, where we are now in 2024 and where we will be by 2027 as the reforms are rolled out. So currently in 2024, you know, what we have uh, within the portfolio is a whole raft of qualifications from level one, level two and level three that support both 16 to 18 and 19 plus. That also includes T levels, obviously. Um, but, you know, very much the, the choice is yours in terms of sort of picking and choosing. Also, along uh, with other awarding organisations, you know, you, you've got a whole sort of range of qualifications that you can select. What you'll start to see as we move through each of the years and as the cycles uh, start to uh, be rolled out, you'll see you'll see some real sort of changes. So for your 16 to 18 in 2025, you will start to see obviously level one remains the same. You will see the new reformed level two qualifications coming into place. And then at level three for 16 to 18, it will only be T levels that are available available for your 19 plus. So if you look at the bottom half of the uh, page here, you will see level one remains the same, so as is, but you will have new reformed qualifications for your adults um, at level uh, two. Quite interestingly, if you sort of flick between your 16 to 18 and your 19 plus at level two, you can see that those qualifications pretty much will, will mirror each other. So when you are planning your curriculum, if you have a mixed cohort of ages within a classroom, you are able to obviously timetable the same qualification. Um, at level three, obviously, this is where you will start to get sort of some differences. So in the 19 plus space um, in 2025, you will have some level three engineering reformed qualifications that are specifically funded for adults. And obviously, you will have your engineering T level. So again, you know, there may be some opportunities to have mixed cohorts uh, if you are delivering the same content, but obviously they will be different qualifications. In 2026, again, like 2025, you will see a similar pattern. So 16 to 18 and 19 plus you have your reformed qualifications will be the same for your adults and and your um 16 to 18 year olds and then you've got your t levels uh for your 16 to 18 and your reformed qualifications for your adults and then in 2027 we will have a level one reformed qualifications level two reformed qualifications and then your level three reformed for adults and your t levels for 16 to 18 so you can sort of see, see as we move through the years we are sort of looking at replacing different qualifications where we can, obviously in sectors where we don't have T-levels or in sec sectors where we perhaps are deciding to sort of review that sort of sector as a whole, our curriculum offer may be different as we move through the years. Okay, Simon, moving on. So you might sort of say, well, what happens if we get a, a change in government? What does this mean for the whole 16, post-16 policy? Should we just hold on to our hats and sort of think, you know, we are going to have a new government potentially this year? Ultimately, what we don't know at the moment is nothing will change to start with, even if we have a change in government in the next few months. Uh, there is a cross-party agreement on T-levels, which means they just won't go away. Obviously, the Skills and Post-16 Education Act is an act of parliament. So obviously, it's not something that is just dissolved overnight. So a lot of the reforms obviously are sort of entrenched in that. So uh, they will sort of um, obviously continue as is at the moment. The possible scenario, there may be a pause and review on the refund the reforms and the funding and how that is sort of changed so you know potentially there will be looking at that obviously nothing will be turned off or turned on overnight so really important there may be a delay in changes or um to the technical 
education current thinking. Uh, what we do know is obviously Labour's manifesto is starting to outline and you can start to hear now where there is that sort of coherence between cross parties, the importance of the employer voice, you know, the fact that employers will have a much bigger say in what skills development um, is sort of put forward for this country and how we move forward with technical qualifications. The importance of standards being that sort of gold um, sort of standard, you know, that everything will be um, sort of uh, sort of moved from. So when we are developing qualifications, the standards will be the sort of pinnacle of, of where we look to and the skills needs of that sector. So again, um, they also echo the importance of standards. And also they uh, agree that there is a need for a streamlined coherent offer. So we are not having the duplicates and the amount of qualifications that currently have. So what's our key sort of takeaways uh, certainly at city and guilds uh, and our key priorities over the next uh, few years is obviously we know that we cannot stand still our current offer will not be the same going forward regardless of changes of policy or government whichever government or policy is introduced we must have clear guidelines and design principles to support future qualification development so the following external criteria will apply we will always obviously ensure that our regulatory compliance uh, will meet all of our qualification developments the sector skills needs so we have our industry boards we meet regularly with um, industry to ensure that we are thinking about future needs we will be mapping all an, uh, new qualification development to standards that sit on the occupational maps have meaningful employer endorsement and validation and assessment strategies and obviously more importantly we will be coming to our uh, providers and our customers to talk about your needs and also the manageability of these new qualifications so really important there that your voice is heard through uh, what we are doing going forward so Simon moving on to the next slide thank you Anita. So obviously this is the start of a conversation, I suppose the continuation of an ongoing conversation, but you'll need to be able to get in touch with us. So uh, just make a note of your uh, business manager. This is your primary uh, point of contact, really. Uh, business managers are regional, so have a look at where you're based in the country uh, and make a note of their email address. Now, uh, like I said, these are, are regional, so they can come in and visit you in person. Quite happy to do with Teams as well, but you know, if you want a rich and deep conversation around things I mentioned before, like your local skills improvement plans, how our sectors on a page and curriculum guides can support that, where you can find more information on product extensions, T-level overlap lists, they're very happy to come in and visit you and have a conversation around the reforms. And how we can really work together to make sure that the, the it's a very positive impact on your curriculum. Uh, so they're the business managers. Now the business managers are general in their awareness of the reforms and general in their awareness of the sectors, uh, but for granular data, detail of a sector you may want to speak to somebody else and the business managers may bring in these people directly you may have met some of them before but these are more national roles generally are two of those where there's two in one sector may um, you know share a sector but these are these are the experts specifically on a sector so for instance Paul Tunnicliffe for automotive if you want to know things around motor vehicle provision that's the person to speak to generally the business managers will pull these through the uh, through the chain and bring them into meetings to be able to talk once again happy to support on teams or in person but if you've got particular questions around what's happening in a sector uh, they'll also cover apprenticeships and everything else by the way but they're very sectorally based so just make a note there find your appropriate sector make a note of who you want to speak to we also have a an online page as well a technical advisors page where you can see all our faces and know that you're correct uh, connecting with the right person but once again business managers is a primary contact but if you want something in a bit more detail or on a specific sector uh, then contact one of these technical advisors and I think that is pretty much us we've only got four minutes left but I didn't notice lots and lots of questions I'm just going to have a look at the questions pane now just bear with me I think there was one around uh, 
sort of I think we talked about GCSEs and you don't necessarily have to complete them as part of the T level. I mean, you should. Uh, I need to mention you should work towards. There were a set of exit requirements around GCSEs that you had to achieve grade four to graduate from the T level, but they were actually remove the exit requirements. Entry requirements, City Ingalls would only ever recommend uh, entry requirements. They don't mandate them. Uh, so it's actually up to the centres around the uh, entry requirements. But we'll, in our specifications for the T level we're talking about here, we'll have uh, a recommended uh, entry requirement in a scheme handbook. We certainly don't mandate any. So I suppose the answer, Cheryl, is there are no entry requirements as such. It's up to you to make a judgment, but we will recommend some. Nothing to add really on that. Is there a need to? Pretty much no, covers Simon. it. Yep. Okay, any others? And then there was a point from Adrian around making sure that mock assessment materials, exam scripts, so on and so forth, are timely. Can this be fed back? Yes, Adrian. Uh, we have uh, had that uh, fed in before. I mean, the great thing about reforms qualifications is uh, it's an absolute minimum lead time of 12 months where you're going to get the material sample assessment material specification. But in reality, because we'll coincide our upload of the materials on our website with the funding list that I need to mention before, you're going to get maybe 16, 17 months uh, to be able to prepare for the first delivery of these qualifications, which is a lot for a qualification. You know, it's probably a bigger lead time than anything we've ever had before. So I think yes, yeah, centres should be very well prepared. Once the quals and the materials are live, my team, the technical advisors team, will be putting on some sessions, you know, online webinars, just to go through the type of qualification it is, uh, you know, the rules of combination, the assessment style or design, just to make sure people are comfortable with delivering these qualifications. The, la the last thing mentioned in the questions was around the sound uh, from Lorraine. Yeah, if it was dropping out, Lorraine, it generally is at your end. It came through quite clear for me. But when you watch the recording back and everybody who's been registered today will be able to access the recording, uh, it will come through. It will come through clearly because it was coming through clearly at, at my end. So don't worry, you can watch it at your leisure. I think we've pretty much covered everything. Uh, just a few thanks for questions wise we're done so that's it thanks for joining so early on a, a Monday today it was a uh, you know we started off the week quite intensely really there I would say but thanks for joining list I know a lot of people are rushing off to the next meeting but thanks to Anita for joining as well and for Kerry and Susie for looking at the questions and answering them in the background but we hope you find it useful keep in touch now use those contacts that we've given you around the business managers and the uh, technical advisors and let's just continue that conversation make sure we all uh, work through these reforms and make sure we get the best for the learners and the employers and any other stakeholders brilliant thanks very much and see you all bye Anita bye everyone thank you thanks everybody bye bye